understand that most of you, uh, many of you, um, have more uh, knowledge and, <coughs> and research experience than I do. But um, with like two years working in the mining industry, I actually have, I believe I do share the same passion and appreciation towards uh, ergonomics and safety as many of you do. So today, um, I'll be presenting my topic on ergonomics comparison across pointing devices. This is a research done at Harvard um, to evaluate the effect of different pointing devices design on upper extremity posture and muscle activity during mouse tasks. So before I go into the detail of the study, uh, I would like to provide you a take-home message since I'll be giving you a lot of information. <coughs> Um, in our study, we did found that um, roller mouse was found to be easy to use before they allow users to operate with a more neutral hand posture and lower uh, muscle activity. So to give you a brief outline of what I'm going to present you today, uh, I'll give you a brief introduction in terms of the background of the study and the uh, hypothesis and why we focus on hand rather than the rest of the upper extremity. Then I'll go into the detail on in terms of experimental setup, the method for evaluation, and I'll present to you the results and finally make a brief conclusion. So, um, as many of you know, um, prolonged mouse use is associated with muscle skeletal disorders and includes many risk factors, including uh, all neutral uh, posture, sustained muscle, acti uh, muscle activity and muscle load, and limited breaks. And many, uh, there are many uh, alternative devices on the market that are currently trying to remedy this situation. And we have traditionally uh, the way to evaluate a pointing device is to, com uh, some study has done to compare the devices, but however, they did find mixed results and inconclusive evidences. That's why on our study, we decided to focus on hand because we, we think we might find more focusing on hand and finger posture. So why focus on hand? Our central hypothesis is that the point in device design, which is related to the size, the shape, the functionality of the device, can affect the motor control of the users, which is essentially how users interact with the device. And that would induce different biomechanical loads, including posture and muscle activity from the users, and which may in turn develop, help, um, contribute to the development of muscle skeletal disorders. So in our study, we selected four different devices. They are like mainstream product on the market. They include a mouse, a trackball, a touchpad, and a roller mouse. The reason also why we select them, because they all have different ways, different size. Um, the users will hold and operate the device, and we figure that it will be a good way for us to compare the device and see if they induce different biomechanical loads. So that leads to our hypothesis coming into this study. We hypothesized that hand posture, including uh, finger spread and joint extension, uh, would differ across various pointing devices. So going into our method and experimental setup, uh, we included several variables. Um, we collected 12 subjects. They aged from 22 to 46 years old, with an average of 27. But however, they are all in their early 20s. Uh, they included six male and six female, and they had no reported history of muscle skeletal disorders. And all of them were presented in random order the four devices that we selected in the study. And all of them completed the two tasks we can incorporate in the study. And for all of them, we measured the hand and finger posture, the forearm muscle activity, and user experience. Uh, at this point, I have to point out that in our study, we actually collect data on the um, posture for the entire upper extremity that includes shoulder, upper arm, forearm, and wrist and hand. However, due to the time constraint of this presentation, we'll be only focusing on the hand and forearm. So these are the four conditions and four devices that we incorporated into this study. The first is the generic mouse. Um, as you can see from the uh, schematics that's kind of partially blocked up, it is always a, usually located on the right of the uh, right-handed user to the keyboard. The second device that we selected was a trackball. A trackball is essentially a device that houses a ball in the front of the device so people can operate it using rolling the ball and then maneuver the cursor on the screen. And traditionally, it is also placed to the uh, right of the keyboard for right-handed users. 
the third device we selected is a touchpad. It, this is a standalone touchpad that um, comes out of the uh, computer, but it is very similar to the touchpad that you use that comes standard with your notebook at home. And last but not least, uh, the roller mouse selected in the study. Uh, for those people who are not familiar with roller mouse, it is a device that comes with a roller bar. And by sliding the bar uh, left to right, you'll be able to control the lateral movement of the cursor on the screen. And by rolling the bar up and down, you'll be able to control the vertical uh, movement on the screen. And you, by clicking, you can either tap on the bar or you can click one of those buttons at the, at the bottom that incorporate into the design. So for the tasks we incorporate in our study, the first part is the solitary. Um, solitary is essentially a computer card game that uh, comes with the Microsoft Office. The reason why we select it is because it is easy to use, it's straightforward, and it's fun for people to use it. And we use that as a tool to help uh, uh, users familiarize themselves with the device, because not everybody has to use all the devices we have in the study. So it is essentially a 100% mouse task. You use that to click, drag, and move the cards around, and we do that for three minutes. After we move on to the second phase of our study, we'll do a web surfing. Um, what we do is we customize, design a web page for a user to uh, simulate this real life task that do about 90% mousing and 10% typing, and we do that for five minutes. So going into our experimental setup, um, this will be a picture of a typical subject setup. Um, for, we incorporate two parts of the setup. The first part, would be measuring the muscle activity. This is done by a surface, my, uh, myograph uh, surface electromyography. <clears throat> then we measure uh, the shoulder, the upper arm, and the forearm uh, uh, extensor muscle activity. Second part of the study, we did a 3D motion analysis on all the subjects. These are the markers that are located on different parts of the uh, subject, including the torso, the upper arm, the forearm, and the hand and the fingers. And the last measure we did was what we call the user <coughs> experience. It consists of two 10 centimeter visual analog scale, like what you see at the bottom of the screen. Essentially, it's made from one, uh, zero to 10. And we ask um, you subjects about questions such as, how difficult was it to perform tasks using this device? And how much discomfort did you feel when you used the device? So moving into the results. Um, before I go into the results, um, the first part I will present to you will be the, what we call the interfinger spread. And how this is done is, as you can see on the left of the screen, that's the uh, picture of the uh, subject's hand. And by um, measuring the, uh, the distance between the two fingertips, we measure the four distance between the five uh, fingers. The adjacent distance, we were using that um, as our indicator. Uh, in this case, we consider the smaller inter finger spread will be uh, more neutral because if you relax your hand, your hands are more naturally close together rather than spreading apart. So here's the result for the first data set. <coughs> um, as you can see, um, the, well, actually you can't see the bottom of the screen, but from the left to right, the first part is the mouse, the second part is the trackball, third part is the uh, touchpad, and the roller mouse is the last one. Um, you can see on the chart, um, both track fat, uh, touch pad and the roller mouse actually perform really well in, in this case. Um, for these distance, the two data points were the distance between the index to middle finger and the middle to ring finger. Uh, it is expected to be significant here because these are three fingers that our users mostly use to interact with the device. And in this case, we also noticed that uh, the distance between the index to middle finger were actually highest for the mouse whereas um, the distance for the index finger and middle finger was lowest seen on the roller mouse. For the second set of data point that we actually measure, measure the finger extension. Uh, how this is done is we measure uh, the two, first two knuckles of your, each finger and we use that to form a vector. And then we calculate the vector between this and your hand plane to find the angle. And then, um, for this case, we consider less extension, which is, extension is moving this way. So we consider less extension to be more neutral because again, if you relax your hand, your hands are more naturally curled up as a fist rather than to make a flat plane. So once again, um, we can't see the bottom, but again, from the left to right, there's mouse, trackball, touchpad, and roller mouse. 
and again, as we 